This is how I set up my MacBook for programming as a full-time software developer and freelancer working from home. First of all, the MacBook I'm using is the M4 Pro, 24GB of RAM and 512GB hard drive. This is more than enough for the work that I do, which is mostly full stack web development. The reason I went a little bit overkill with the spec was mainly because I want to be able to use this laptop for many years to come. And also more for the, like the YouTube side of things, editing these videos. And of course, it's nice to have that 24 gigabytes of RAM as I'm always multitasking and got lots of programs open. It's definitely an amazing laptop. The link to where I bought it will be on a QR code on the screen and a link in the description. For the most part, I had the laptop docked on my desk using an old Thunderbolt 3 dock and having just one single cable is really simple and easy to use. This is amazing because it gives me so much more USB connectivity and I can switch between my MacBook and work laptop with just having to change one single cable. And of course it makes the setup look a lot cleaner with most of the cables being hidden under the desk. I've always worked on two monitors and I've recently been trying this new setup of having one portrait and one landscape. Both of them are 2K monitors and usually on the portrait monitor I'll have anything that I'm reading like docs or web browser and things on the left and on the right is the main screen that I usually use for development. However the left hand side screen is still quite good to use development and I often will put VS code on that screen and have a design on the main screen when I'm working on clients websites. It actually feels sometimes you can fit a lot more in on the portrait screen even though it's still the same size. Maybe in the future I'll replace these with one single ultrawide monitor, but for now these monitors do the job. Getting onto the MacBook itself and the software that I use is pretty simple and minimal to be honest. Uh, so we'll start with the terminal. I like to replace the default terminal with iTerm2. It gives you much more customizability. Again, I keep it pretty minimal, but you can completely change the theme if you like and all the different colors. Some of the other useful features include split panes, which allows you to split your terminal vertically or horizontally, which allows you to be able to have multiple open but keep it in an organized single window. Then there's the hotkey window, which allows you to set up a custom hotkey that brings a terminal to the foreground no matter what application you're in. And there's a built-in search that has autocomplete, a copy mode, which lets you select and copy text using just your keyboard, and a paste history, which is really useful. It saves all the recently copied items. And these are just a few of the most useful features. There's much, much more that I don't make use of that makes iTerm a really powerful tool for any developer. Then of course, moving on to everyone's favorite, VS Code. Most recently, I've been using VS Code to create some simple HTML, CSS, and JavaScript websites. And so a couple of the useful extensions that I use are Save All, which is pretty self-explanatory. It adds a button to be able to save all files that are open, that have been edited. And I changed the shortcut to be Command S. So every time I save, it makes sure it saves everything. Something I've done in the past as well is when working on a specific project, every time I did command S, it would save and push to a Git repository. So I had a full history of changes and points that I could roll back to. And the other extension I'll talk about is Live Server, which I've always used and is great for developing websites as it fires up a local server on your machine so that it acts like a hot reload. So every time you save with a HTML, CSS or JavaScript file, it refreshes the page and you can see it reflect on the screen straight away. If you would like me to do a more in-depth video on VS Code extensions, let me know in the comments below. In terms of productivity, that is probably something I need to be better at. I still use things like the default Apple notes and to-do lists. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but um, yeah, I write down all my ideas and things that I gotta do in there. It does the job for me because it syncs between my phone and my iPad and my laptop, but I am aware there's other tools like Notion and which has a lot more useful features. Maybe you guys could suggest some ideas for me in the comments below. Anyway, that is my minimalist MacBook setup. It's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. If you want more videos like this one, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.